peer groups, documentarians, and financial advisors. Monday to Friday with your host, Tyler Kieft. Catch the Megacast weekdays from 10 a.m. to 11 on Civic Center TV, 89.3 Lakes FM, and streaming on MyMyTV.com. You're watching and listening to your home for Greater West Bloomfield News. Civic Center TV and 89.3 WBLD Orchard Link. West Bloomfield, Kego Harbor, Sylvan Lake. 89.3 Lakes FM. It's the Megacast, an hour-long TV and radio streaming show keeping you informed on the day-to-day -day news. Live from West Bloomfield, we're bringing you the news, updates, and information impacting communities around Michigan. Join our host, Tyler Keeft, as he talks with community members, business leaders, and professional experts about the stories that impact you. You're watching the Megacast on Civic Center TV. The West Bloomfield Youth Assistants will be recognizing local youth for their volunteer service, personal growth, and leadership. Join us as schools, hospitals, and religious organizations nominate the up-and-comers in your community. Show your pride for our future. The Youth Recognition Awards, May 10th at 6 p.m. at the West Bloomfield Middle School. This community update from Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. There are many different kinds of noses. Our noses can sniff out all kinds of things. Good things and bad things. Your nose knows if those sniffles are just a cold, allergies, or COVID-19. So swab it, test it, it's good to know. You're listening to your radio homes for the Megacast, 89.3 WBLD Orchard Lake and 88.1 WBFH Bloomfield Hills. Today's edition of the Megacast begins now. Welcome to the Megacast, our live daily TV, radio, and streaming show talking about all things Oakland County and the state of Michigan. I'm your host, Tyler Keeft. Today we'll be talking to a number of people about topics of interest and importance to Michiganders just like you. Let's begin as we always do on our local news page on civiccentertv.com, exploring the top headlines making news on this Thursday morning. Our top story comes from Clara Hendrickson at the Detroit Free Press. Following last week's passage of two gun reform laws, Michigan Democrats in the legislature have now passed a third piece of legislation through the system, sending a so-called red flag law to Governor Whitmer's desk, where it is expected to be signed into law by the second-term Democrat. The bill, Senate Bill 83, passed along party lines on Wednesday in the Michigan Senate, creating a law that would permit family members, law enforcement, and other very specific individuals to petition courts to take away firearms from people that are deemed to be either a threat to themselves and or others. This won't be cut and dry or easy to do, however. Petitioners will need to present a, quote, preponderance of the evidence uh, that can reasonably be expected within the near future to unintentionally or intentionally seriously, physical, seriously physically injure uh, someone else and has engaged in an act or acts or made significant threats that are substantially supportive of this expectation, and closed quote. This would in include such red flags as threats against the themselves or others, uh, proof of mental illness, past criminal charges, alcohol abuse, and other factors, as well as uh, information considered relevant in preventing the in presenting these pe these people as possibly being a threat, uh, and, and petitioning the courts to say, hey, we need to take these weapons out of the hands of these people who could do harm to others in the general public very soon. Michigan would then join 19 other states in making these sorts of laws should the governor sign this bill uh, into law herself in the near future. According to April Zioli from the Institute for Firearm Injury Prevention at the University of Michigan, quote, the research shows that extreme risk protection orders, otherwise known as red flag laws, have been used in the past in response to threats of mass shootings and used successfully to remove firearms and prevent purchase of more firearms by the people who are making these threats, and closed quote. In addition, directly quoted from Clara Hendrickson's article, quote, a recent study of six states with red flag laws also found 
found that 10% of extreme risk protection order cases were prompted to uh, by threats to kill multiple people, and most of those targets were K through 12 schools and closed quote. Also making headlines today on our local news page from Mark Torregrosa at M Live. A cool start to the day this morning with temperatures in the 40s won't last very long. By mid-afternoon, the summer weather of last week will make a reprisal in our local area with temperatures teetering on or surpassing 80 degrees. A warm front is making its way through the Great Lakes state today and Tora Grossa reports that sometimes in these cases uh, th these warm fronts will enter with quite the bang, adding a surge of warm temperatures and uh, well, quite the grand entrance expected today with some areas here in southeastern Michigan reaching upwards of 82 degrees and, and other parts Parts of our local area here in Oakland County in the high 70s or in the lower 80s. For example, Flint is expected to be around 81 degrees at 5 o'clock. Uh, the entire area from Ann Arbor to Lansing, Jackson, Battle Creek, and Kalamazoo will be around 82 degrees by 5 o'clock on Thursday. Uh, and this is going to happen throughout the afternoon. That warm up is going to be very sudden. By sudden, I mean over the course of two or three hours between about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and that 5 o'clock in the afternoon time that you're seeing on your screen if you're watching us on your TV, on your TV or, or if you're watching us uh, on the web as well. You'll see that, in, of course, on demand, civiccentertv.com slash megacast this afternoon. But sunshine, warm weather, and a beautiful day once again here in Oklahoma. Oakland County nonetheless. So try to get some time outdoors, take a break and soak in the Michigan spring sun if you have the chance to do so. It may not be around for very long. You might, might not, you might wake up a couple days from now and have a snowstorm outside your window. We had some snow earlier on in the week after 80 degree weather. It's happened before. So like, get a little taste of summer, enjoy it, get some time outdoors, a little bit, bit of sunshine. Uh, never does too much harm for the good old noggin up here. Finally making headlines today on civiccentertv.com's local news page from the entire team at the Detroit News. Tomorrow afternoon, Michigan State University will be breaking ground on its brand new multicultural center located on the corner of West Shaw and Farm Lanes in the heart of the MSU campus. The $38 million center announced in February will include, uh, but not be limited to, outdoor an outdoor amphitheater, resources for undocumented students for both academic and career assistance, uh, prayer rooms across multiple multiple faiths, a variety of collaborative spaces, as well as a proper office space for the Council of Racial and Ethnic Students and the Council of Progressive Students as well. I, I was in East Lansing last weekend celebrating the 40th anniversary of the MSU Telecasters Club and I happened to roam the campus and it's very much primed and ready to go to start uh, this project as soon as they can. They're going to break ground at about 2.30 in the afternoon tomorrow, uh, uh, interim MSU President Teresa Woodruff, as well as Rima Vassar, the chairwoman of the university's board of trustees, as well as other school officials will be in attendance uh, for this groundbreaking ceremony. And it's expected that the project will be complete uh, a little bit over a year from now in the fall of 2024. And it's gonna take up quite a lot of space. They're replacing what was uh, some open field space with some basketball and, and uh, and sand volleyball courts just outside of Shaw Hall and uh, maybe half a block down the road from the Cata bus station in the heart of campus and right along the Red Cedar River as well. So beautiful location. It's right across from the uh, education school building down the street from the International Center in the heart of MSU's campus and gonna be a great resource for a lot of people on campus. Great news for both MSU students, students of diverse backgrounds and of course the university bringing another attraction to the heart of that campus and something that's going to be a great resource for a lot of people following in the footsteps of many other institutions all across our local area. Now all they need to sweeten the ambiance of the environment is to bring back the original Farm Lane walk sign. True Spartans will know exactly what I'm talking about. All these headlines making news today are on our website, civiccentertv.com, on our local news page, along with all the top stories from throughout the week and the links to public health information from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, and locally here in Oakland County from the Oakland County Health Division. We have a great show ahead on today's edition of the Megacast. Coming up next, it's our weekly mental health segment with Carrie Craywick from the Birmingham Maple Clinic. Stay tuned. You're watching and listening to the Megacast. 
How can you get involved with upcoming elections? West Bloomfield Township wants you to join the ranks as an election inspector. Get trained on using polling equipment, proper procedures for handling ballots, and more to keep the voting process smooth and safe. If you're interested, go to wbtownship.org for more information or call the clerk's office with the number provided on screen. This community update from Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. One in four Michigan homes has high levels of radon, a naturally occurring radioactive gas known to cause lung cancer. It doesn't matter where you live or what type of home you have. You won't even know it's there unless you test. So don't wait. Testing is cheap and easy. And if there's a problem, it's simple to fix. Visit michigan.gov slash radon to learn more. We took action, will you? Let's savor these moments, made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the dining out going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. West Bloomfield Youth Assistance will be recognizing local youth for their volunteer service, personal growth, and leadership. Join us as schools, hospitals, and religious organizations nominate the up-and-comers in your community. Show your pride for our future. The Youth Recognition Awards, May 10th at 6 p.m. at the West Bloomfield Middle School. This community update from Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Welcome back to the MegaCast, our live daily TV, radio, and streaming show talking about all things Michigan. I'm your host, Tyler Keeft. You can learn more about our program and keep up to date with us on our, local, on our uh, MegaCast page on civiccentertv.com slash MegaCast. We will find more information on all of our partnering stations across Oakland County and throughout the Great Lakes State, including My Michigan TV, and find all of our full shows and each individual segment on demand as well. So if you happen to not be able to join us for the entirety of our live Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. time slot. You can always join us online on your own time anytime at civiccentertv.com slash megacast. Joining us now on the program for our weekly mental health segment is Carrie Craywick, a therapist at the Birmingham Maple Clinic. Carrie, thanks for being with us again. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah, glad to have you on the show uh, as we're into the thick of, of the spring season now and we're starting to get more of that spring weather outside. That's a nice reminder for people to you know, get going on some of their spring cleaning. But creating that tidiness isn't just for the home or outside in the yard or in your office. It's also a good time to, to wipe the slate clean and, and start anew in, in your mind as well. So at, at, uh, with that being the case, as we talk about spring cleaning, how can that also be applied to your mental health? Well, well, first and foremost, spring cleaning actually has benefits for your mental health. So if you've ever gotten in your car after a car wash, you know, inside and out and feel like a million bucks, like you could be driving a Maserati no matter what you're driving, um, that's the kind of um, endorphin release um, that comes um, from being in a tidy space. So um, cleaning and decluttering and removing sort of excess from our environment um, actually helps lower stress hormones, reduces irritability ability, reduces anxiety, even monotonous tasks like vacuuming or sorting um, are stress relieving in that we get a sense of accomplishment without really a ton of exertion um, mentally, um, which is also just a strategy for, for calming and self-care. Um, so the, using it as a metaphor, right? I mean, I think when it comes also to spring cleaning in our in our um, society, we bring so much into our homes. We might get a free towel at a sporting event or a free t-shirt from the car wash or a Happy Meal toy. And we're just always bringing this stuff in. Um, and then we feel like it's important even though it's not really important and we rarely get it out. Um, so really being honest with ourselves about what is waste 
Um, and if we're if if we don't want to waste something, but it's taking up time, space, money, um, effort in our own home, then it's still a waste. Um, and the same goes true for some of our thoughts. We bring a lot of stuff into our mind, things we think are important, such as the judgment of others or expectations about what we should be doing. We bring that all in because we think it's important, and we rarely go through it, sort it out, and get rid of it, um, which is a which is a mental task we can also be doing while doing some of those other mundane sorting cleaning tasks. Yeah, the, the, it, it, those tasks are something that can kind of keep your mind off of things that are starting to stress you out and that you get away from those for a little while. Uh, even just, you know, over the weekend, I, I took some time, I was folding some towels, I, I was, you know, cleaning uh, my, my apartment again and, and just taking a, a little while to do that. It does kind of clear your mind, you get into the flow of doing those different tasks and then you can get back with a fresh mind and start reconsidering those things that are starting to stress you out a little bit. So as you're doing that cleaning, you're trying to you know, figure out what is worthwhile in your in your life or what is worthwhile in, in your mind versus what it what is more along the side of things that you need to get rid of uh, from, from your current psychological state. Uh, what should you be looking for and, and what should be those first additional tasks that you take after you've taken that inventory? I love it. And we're talking, you know, we're talking about two things at the same time, both the cleaning and spring cleaning, our actual physical cleaning and also our mental cleaning. I love this experience you shared about, right? Like doing something kind of monotonous and re repetitive, but not very high level allowed you to sort of clear your mind. I mean, that's an activity that we should be doing. I mean, that's really, that's really what mindfulness is about. People say, oh, I can't do meditation or something really just sort of doing something boring and allowing your thoughts to sort of just clear them themselves and you just be present in what you're doing is in itself a mindfulness exercise. And um, and that is one of the things, right? That is sort of how we sort of like wash and rinse what's in our brain. And then, then we can sort of, like you said, then we sort through what's left. What have we been putting off? Are there things we've been putting off? Um, those things can take up a lot of space in our brain. I should be doing this, but I'm not. So, you know, making a list and organizing, are there some things you've been putting off? Then ranking them, right? Are are they things that need to be done? Are they things that could be done in 10 or 15 minutes? Are there things that take a longer amount of time? Are they things that I need to set up some goals over time? Um, and then and then look at your, your schedule and your routine, you know, both for doing the actual tasks of cleaning, but also these other things that come up in our mind. Can it be done in 10 or 15 minutes? If yes, when you have 10 or 15 minutes, do it. Um, if it can't, look at look at your your days, week, months, or year, and 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 allot for some time to do it. You know, I think when it comes to cleaning and organizing, um, we don't consider them self care, even though it is taking care of ourselves. We have this misunderstanding that self care means just effortless, and we put our feet up and binge watch TikTok. That's not really self care. Self care is also doing something rewarding and productive, even if it takes effort. So, like you said, looking at you know we had beautiful weather last week looking at your schedule okay like a good self-care strategy for last saturday was cleaning out the garage right it feels awesome it was outdoors and it was rewarding um if on a rainy day it might be the closet or something you know so giving yourself a few hours to do something rewarding if it takes a long time um and then also creating some space for some rest after that and we're joined by Carrie Carrick on today's edition of the MegaCast, a therapist at the Birmingham Maple Clinic, who joins us every Thursday for our weekly mental health segment. You can find all of those on demand on our website on civiccentertv.com slash MegaCast and get in contact with Carrie and the professionals at the Birmingham Maple Clinic on their website, BirminghamMaple.com. Uh, Carrie, as we compare spring cleaning to spring cleaning our minds, uh, that, that connection between the home and your mind, you've mentioned it a, a, a little bit already, but uh, just how much of a reflection can that space that you make your own really be uh, or uh, as much of an indicator on you know what is going on in your mind and what is your current mental state if your home is you know messy does that usually correlate to you know you have a little bit more clutter in your mind as well and vice versa Perhaps. Well, there is some. There are some indicators. Like I said, you know, a, a, a clutter-filled, untidy home um, does increase stress hormones. People experience more stress hormones. Um, a clean home releases endorphins and those positive hormones. Um, women, in particular, even just looking at pictures of untidy homes, um, creates depression and anxiety, negative thoughts. Um, there is some research now on people who even just view clean talk. Um, uh, 
uh, TikToks are getting a little shot of dopamine, even from watching a couple second video. Now, keeping in mind those people spent hours cleaning to give you a little, you know, four second glimpse into their lives. Um, but, you know, I think too, and, and also just in relationships, you know, it's, it's lost, it's irritability, finding something that's lost, fighting with each other, maybe even having to replace broken things or lost things. So there's like financial strain, there's stress in the family, you know, we might be shouting or irritable and things like that, which are also going to lower our mood. Um, and I, you know, I, I like you said this like sort of metaphor too. you know, something like a junk drawer, we take shortcuts and we try to just be fast in our lives and drop something in. Um, but the reality is, is that then I, what I found this weekend is I opened up one junk drawer, cleaned it out to find out, well, if I am putting something else away, that drawer is kind of junky too. Right. And so we just not taking time. So I think like the, the value of something or saying to bring the mental connection, something like therapy or devoting some some time to something, say, for example, journaling or something helps us to really put stuff away, right? What is in here and where does it go? Where does it belong? Is it something to save? Is it something to learn from? Or is it something to throw away and let go of? And and, and a real metaphor for our mind, taking time and space to say, what, what is even going on in here? Where does this come from? Where did I learn this? Whom has led me to believe this? And do I need to continue to believe it? Or can I say, hey, that's false and, and get it out of here? You can call the team at the Birmingham Maple Clinic at 248-646-6659 or send them an email, info at birminghammaple.com for more information uh, on ways to get in contact with them and to ask any of the questions that you may need uh, from a variety of therapists with a variety of different areas of expertise. Carrie, uh, you also specialize uh, in family therapy and, and in marital th therapy as well. And, and so uh, when, when you're getting to this time of the year and you are cleaning out th those homes, you mentioned you know cleaning the garage, last weekend was great for that it looks like it's going to be the same case again this coming weekend turning those activities into a family activity or into an activity with your partner how can that also benefit those relationships and, and weeding out some of the issues that might be uh, in those dynamics Sure. Well, certainly, you know, just creating a joyful experience of something, even like we said, sort of repetitive or a family tradition, um, that positive involvement um, is a good thing for families. It also just creates the good habits, you know, like, do we have some sort of together time or routine each day for putting things away? Um, and then and then it isn't just one person, you know, screeching, this place is a wreck, I need to put it all away, you know, but doing it together and being able to offer that verbal praise, that encouragement, those positive positive reinforcement, those interactions that are so rewarding for both the giver and um, the receiver. Um, again, you know, creating creating a routine, you know, we do, we do declutter and those kinds of things this time of year. Um, it, you know, outside, everything's kind of new and fresh, plus everyone last week, I think, was experiencing more energy and more positive, you know, excitement about kind of the new season. Um, and so using that in, at this time of year helps set the stage. But the problem is we just don't do the best job keeping it up and so again maybe creating like I said a routine maybe one weekend a month one week when we do the garage because it's a beautiful first day of spring but maybe in August we do the basement when it's so hot outside and we can just be someplace cool together but sorting through you know some stuff at that time of year or looking you know at, at November and going through the pantries and old food and getting rid of stuff as we approach the holidays kind of being mindful and aware what what does this time of year need and and dedicating some time to declutter something then, as opposed to trying to do it all at once, which can just be overwhelming. And then people avoid it and get their dopamine fix looking at clean talk videos on TikTok instead of really doing their own space. We're joined by Carrie Krivick, a therapist at the Birmingham Maple Clinic, as uh, as she joins us each and every week on Thursdays for our weekly mental health segment. You can find all those on demand, civiccentertv.com slash megacast. Carrie, uh, often when people are cleaning out their home, they're trying to declutter, they're trying to decide what stays and what goes, or what, what stays in this area versus another area, what is out of storage versus what's in storage. Often what they run into is, is an issue with something that they know it's probably time for it to, to to go away and, and no longer be in the home, but they have some sort of connection to it. So what advice do you have for those individuals that may be holding on to something in their home that they really have that connection to, but they know deep down or they're being told by others in their home too, it's time for this to go away. 
I love that. And, you know, attachments are something we talk about mentally in therapy too. We attach to certain ideas or topics and are what, where did it come from? What does it mean to us? How is it benefiting us now? And, and why do we have that belief? You know, I think um, even understanding um, things like scarcity and people who maybe have had traumas around not having things or the right things, and then they feel compelled to hold on to them. Um, even understanding, right, yeah, some of those mental themes um, can be very useful and then knowing what do we need to get rid of and what don't we um, to change our behaviors for our own health. Are there ways to remember or commemorate something or have, you know, sort of a ritualized kind of burial or letting go um, if it can be sort of given away or repurposed can you get some joy or um, a sense of um, positivity from sharing that or giving it to someone else um, and I think yeah so if, if, if you're if you're holding on to something you know Marie Kondo Marie Kondo really talked about is it bringing us joy you know can you touch it hold it and, and feel joy it's a great like rule of thumb because if it's causing conflict in your marriage or other people are critical of you keeping it, that joy may be in question. Um, and is there something else that it can be either replaced with or exchanged for um, that you may also feel joy um, and, 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 and use that as a rule of thumb? Joining us is Carrie Krivik, a therapist at the Birmingham Mayfield Clinic. If you are in need of some consultation, particularly for uh, within your marriage or within your family, birminghammaple.com, 248-646-6659. You can also contact the Birmingham Maple Clinic for a variety of therapies and, and other areas of expertise as well. Carrie, before we let you go, anything else uh, that we haven't discussed on this topic that would be important for people to consider at this time? Yeah, and like I, I think it's always just um, evaluating what you're bringing in. So again, whether it's in our mind, you know, what we're bringing in in terms of thoughts or social media or expectations of other people, but in our homes also, what are we bringing in? One way to avoid clutter is to evaluate, you know, if you're bringing in um, mailers, you know, and stuff that's junk and, you know, it's like if you don't bring it in, it's one great boundary to start with right from the beginning that will help you so that you don't have um, too much clutter on the other side. Well, Carrie, thank you as always for joining us and giving us some insight on to how, into how this routine task that we may be not even thinking about having benefits to our mind is actually helping us get through some of the things that we're working through as well. Thank you. BirminghamMaple.com is their website. You can send them an email, info at BirminghamMaple.com, or call them, 248-646-6659, or just come back here every single Thursday to join Carrie Krawick and I for our weekly mental health segment right here on the Megacast. We'll take a break on the program. On the other side, the housing market has been up and down over the last few years. Same goes for the retail market, but why is Southeast Michigan becoming a hotbed for people buying retail real estate? state here in the state of Michigan. We'll talk to an expert next about that topic and more. Stay tuned. This is the Megacast. Hello, My to turn on live captions, go to civiccentertv.com and click Watch Live. In your web browser, click on the Options tab in the top right and find the Accessibilities tab. Then just switch on live captions to heighten your enjoyment of our local programming. Thank you so much for watching Civic Center TV. What's happening around you? Hear about state events, businesses, and from the people behind them on The Megacast, an hour-long TV, radio, and streaming show keeping you informed on the day-to-day -day news. Listen in on talks with volunteer groups, documentarians, and financial advisors Monday to Friday with your host, Tyler Keeft. Catch The Megacast weekdays from 10 a.m. to 11 on Civic Center TV, 89.3 Lakes FM, and streaming on MyMyTV.com. Watch Civic Center TV with our brand new live captions. To turn on live captions, go to civiccentertv.com and click Watch Live. In your web browser, click on the Options tab in the top right and find the Accessibilities tab. Then just switch on live captions to heighten your enjoyment of our local programming. Thank you so much for watching Civic Center TV.
Welcome back to the Megacast, our live daily TV, radio, and streaming show talking about all things Oakley and the state of Michigan. I'm your host, Tyler Keeft. You can learn more about our program and keep up to date with every single one of our full episodes and each individual segment on our website on civiccentertv.com slash megacast. We'll find links to all of our partnering stations that include original programming in the other 23 hours of the day that they're not joining us on the Megacast Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. live on the program and find all of our full episodes and each individual segment on demand as well. So you can watch it on your time, whether you're joining us in, in part for our live shows or you can't join us at all any, any day for our live shows, but you want to keep up to date with the program. It's always on our website, civiccentertv.com slash megacast. Well, over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic and certainly over the last few years, as things have ebbed and flowed in the economy coming out, of the thick of the COVID crisis. The real estate market has certainly been one of those different markets and one of those different industries that's had a lot of ups and downs, including in commercial real estate. One local expert is here now to join us to talk about how that's impacting us right here in Oakland County and in Southeastern Michigan. Joining us now on the program is Cindy Sierra, the principal at CC Consulting. Cindy, thanks for being with us. Hi, thank you, Tyler. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, glad to have you on uh, to, to talk about this. But let's just start with a little bit of, of your background. How did you get involved uh, in real estate in general, but specifically commercial real estate? Right, right. Uh, well, Tyler, I've been doing this for a little over 25 years. Uh, I worked for some of the large developers in town, uh, Show Staff Brothers and Company, the Forbes Company, um, the folks that own the Somerset Collection. And um, I went out on my own about 15 years ago. <clears throat> And I have my background is marketing. I've always enjoyed marketing. Um, and what I've always enjoyed is bringing people to the state of Michigan, especially retailers that aren't currently represented here. And so um, this is how I spend my time. Uh, I'm now currently working in eight states in addition to Michigan, but I cut my teeth here. I've done work in Oakland County. I do a tremendous amount of work in downtown Birmingham. And I've done a lot of work in the city of Detroit as well. So we think about those hotbeds for commercial businesses, for retail, right. for restaurants, and so on. You mentioned downtown Birmingham. You think Royal Oak. You think Ferndale. Uh, and you think you think those sorts of places. And then there's up and coming places all throughout southeastern Michigan as well. What about southeastern Michigan is so attractive to these kinds of businesses? Well, I'll tell you what, Tyler, the one thing I have to say, and I think it's very exciting for our industry. I mentioned I've been doing this for quite some time. so. I can recall going to conferences even as long as 15 years ago or so, and you'd say you're from Michigan, and you didn't always have a, a exciting welcome by retailers because they didn't view Michigan as one of the top retail industries in the U.S. That has all changed, and I am continuously surprised to see the wonderful level of retailers that we have coming into our state now. Um, you know, when you look at downtown Birmingham, for example, um, it, within two years, we're going to have a 50,000 square foot RH store. If you're not familiar with RH, it's a, a former restoration hardware. It's an anchor department store. Those of you who remember Birmingham in the day, they had Jacobson's. I mean, once again, Birmingham's going to have an anchor department store, and it is wildly successful. I recently did a deal with CB2, which is Crate and Barrel's urban concept. 8,000 square feet, it opened a month ago uh, in downtown Birmingham. And there was a handful of other retailers. I'll, just one quick example is Faraday. Faraday is a new hot, and hot, hot, hot up and coming concept that appeals to men, women, and children's clothing. Um, all of the fabrics are, you know, um, sustainable. They're all wonderful, comfortable, easy to breathe, easy to wear fabrics. And it's just, if you haven't seen it, it's located right on Old Woodward. It's an amazing store, Faraday. We're joined on the program by Cindy Sierra, the principal at CC Consulting, talking about commercial real estate, particularly here in the state of Michigan. You can get more information and, and consultation from Cindy and the team at CC Consulting by visiting their website, ccconsultgroup.com, ccconsultgroup.com for more information. And, and in, in terms of where the market is at right now, we know in the housing market, it's been kind of up and down. It's been a buyer's market. It's been a seller's market. It's been nobody's market. How has that really been on the commercial real estate side? 
Well, I think, um, you know, residential has become more and more important. Um, you'll see retail developments that have a residential component um, are really, it's kind of like where it's at right now in the industry. And I think that you see um, surrounding retail, you see tremendous residential development. And so that you see mixed use developments are really um, kind of the buzzword of our industry right now. You see the development, you know, the malls have gone through a transition. The malls have, you know, many B and C malls, what we say not as successful malls have closed. And many of those mixed use developments have actually been developed into other projects that have a residential component to them. So, um, you know, retail continues to evolve, but like I mentioned before, the development, especially retail development in Michigan is extremely strong. Joining us on the program is Cindy Sierra, the principal at CC Consulting, as we talk about commercial real estate here in the state of Michigan. Currently, uh, given the, the strength that you mentioned uh, of the commercial real estate uh, industry in, in Michigan and that fervor from businesses both around the state already and those outside looking to come into Michigan. What are some of the current challenges being faced in the real estate market on the commercial side and how's that ultimately impacting the consumers? Well, I gotta tell you, as, it, it, as with everything, when more and more people are interested in coming into our state, more and more brands are looking at coming into our state that has caused some of the retail rental rates to go up. And as a whole, as a state, whether you're in Detroit, whether you're in Oakland County, Macomb County or such, um, you will find that even from the times of what rental rates were before COVID till now, they've gone up significantly. Um, so, I mean, rents are higher. It's harder on a mom and pop business because it, the nationals can sometimes take the hits of a, of a higher rental rate. But many times for mom and pop businesses, it's more difficult. The other thing that's um, it's a little bit of a change in what has been happening, but a lot of the retailers are asking, if you want to go, if you want us, Mr. Retailer, to come to your project, uh, we want the landlord to contribute. We call it TI, tenant improvements. Um, they, those numbers, and they're based on the square footage, while they might have been $25, $30 a foot, um, now they can be $100 a foot or $150 a foot. Very significant investment from the landlord that the retailers are now requiring. And then in terms of those mom and pop shops, because that those are really important to, to cities, Absolutely. keeping them in the cities and in these municipalities, but also right. allowing them right. to compete for quality spaces, given right. the, that rent is raising is raising uh, in our state yeah. and across the, the globe. Uh, yeah. uh, what would you say or what would your advice be to those mom and pop shops looking to remain competitive or at least be competitive uh, in commercial real estate to put them in the best position in these right. thriving cities like a Birmingham or a Royal Oak? Right. I think two things. Number one, I would say look for a smaller locations. Smaller locations as a whole, just as rental rates go up, are more popular than larger. And so I think mom and pops can generally look for, you know, smaller opportunities. And I also think that some of the cities that maybe don't have the rents that some of the um, more expensive cities have are also a phenomenal option. Um, and, and I mentioned as a whole, the state is going up, but you know, the Ferndales, the Berkeleys, the, you know, some of the other cities that may not have as high of a rent as a, like a Birmingham. Are, are wonderful opportunities as well. More information and, and ways you can get in contact with CC Consulting, including Cindy, can be found at ccconsultgroup.com, ccconsultgroup.com for more information. In terms of where Michigan is at, how is that both going along with the trends across the U.S., but also in, in what ways is Michigan kind of bucking those trends and going in its own path? Yeah, I, I, I truly believe that, um, you know, Michigan is standing out. Uh, I just had a national broker who represents some absolutely phenomenal brands from New York call me, um, ask me, um, you know, if they wanted to talk about, you know, opportunities within Michigan. They wanted to talk about, you know, the Canadian customer, which I think is interesting. You know, Metro Detroit is half an hour away from the bridge. And um, the Canadian customer, which is looking for options and, and frequently comes to Michigan, is something that retailers are taking notice of, and with good reason.
And so for, for those businesses that are looking to take that next step, move to that next great location, how can consulting with a group like yours help them make that step forward? Well, um, I frequently have people um, come to me and say, you know, whether they're a mom and pop looking for business, you know, to suggest a location for them if they're looking at coming into the Michigan market. Um, you know, and then on the flip side, I have developers saying, I'm building a project. Who do you think are the right and appropriate retailers that I should select for my for my project? So you have kind of people coming from both ways. But yes, like you said, that's what we do. Uh, we are commercial brokers. Um, so we, you know, we, we have our pulse on, I would say, most of the major markets within our state. And, um, you know, we're, we'll definitely, um, you know, be able to talk to anybody, you know, that we might be interested in looking at retail currently. Well, Cindy, a couple more minutes with you before we need to wrap things up today. Any right. lasting uh, advice or other things we haven't talked about in terms of commercial real estate in Michigan at this time that we should know about? Well, I think I'll just mention because it's something, it's a topic that a lot of people have talked to, and that is um, brick and mortar retail, which is, you know, actual storefronts versus online shopping. Um, if you can recall, even before the pandemic, people were saying, oh, shopping is going away. We're not going to see retail stores. We're going to be doing everything 100% online. And I think, um, quite honestly, and especially after COVID, we know nothing can be further than, than that. Um, you know, while online shopping, of course, is popular, uh, three quarters of us shop for our clothing and it other items on, um, in person. So the bulk of 70% of shopping is, is basically done in person. And, uh, um, you know, a third of that is done online. And the other thing that's interesting to mention is, you know, what new brands are coming down the pike. Many of those new brands had started, I'll give an example, like a Warby Parker. Warby Parker, the eyeglass um, company, wildly successful, started as an online retailer. And they notice, they know that there's, you know, great success to having great locations. And so they've been opening, especially in Michigan, they've been opening other locations. And so I think to see, you know, these online brands now selecting Amazon, though, for example, they've opened two apparel stores. You can get an, an Amazon apparel store um, in Ohio and in, in Los Angeles. So, and they look at rolling that out across the country. So it's interesting to see the online brands actually deciding to have stores. CCConsultGroup.com is their website. You can also call them at 248-758-2358 for more information and consultation. Cindy, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Once again, ccconsultgroup.com or 248-758-2358 for more information. Uh, you're going to want to get some advice from local experts on, on how to get through the current commercial real estate market, especially as with what Cindy said. It's very competitive, and it's only getting more competitive. Great news for our local communities here in southeast mm -hmm. Michigan. We'll take a break on the Megacast on the other side. Of course, it's always important to get to get a quality education at all age groups, but in particular, those early childhood education experiences can be formative in how successful your child is in school and beyond their schooling. Joining us next will be a couple of individuals from Oakland Schools for a weekly, uh, for bi-weekly Oakland Schools Education Insider. Stay tuned, you won't want to miss that. It's up next on the Megacast. Can I ask you a question? Uh why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. It will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer. Because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine. To keep safe and strong. Be like happy, having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. I'm Steve Eisenman of the Detroit Red Wings, and I think every child in Michigan deserves a safe, healthy, and happy childhood. Can we build a state where children trust Michigan isn't just a name, but something our kids believe? Please support Children Trust Michigan as the voice for children and families by visiting the website to learn more.
Wondering what to say to someone who's been sexually assaulted or abused? I believe you. I'm so sorry this happened. It's not your fault. Confidential and anonymous help is available at the Michigan Sexual Assault Hotline. Connect with us 24-7. Call 855-VOICES-4 or text 1-866-238-1454 for help. Learn more at michigan.gov slash voices4. Like what you see? Beautiful works of art, masterworks of metal, and accomplishments of artistry will be on display near you. All kinds of artists from all walks of life come together to celebrate their skill and appreciate their work's beauty. Hot Works presents the 2023 Orchard Lake Fine Art Show. Stop by July 29th and 30th between 2 and 10 p.m. between Powers and Daly off of Orchard Lake Road. Welcome back to the MegaCast, our live daily TV, radio, and streaming show talking about all things Oakland County and the state of Michigan. I'm your host, Tyler Keith. You can always join us online, on demand, and live on civiccentertv.com slash megacast. That's where you'll find information on where to watch our show every day live from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., as well as live to tape throughout Oakland County and across the state of Michigan, and find all of our full shows and each individual segment on demand as well. civiccentertv.com slash megacast is the place to go for all of that information each and every day. Joining us now on the megacast are two individuals from Oakland Schools for a bi-weekly Oakland Schools Education Insider. This week we're all focused up on early childhood education. On the program with us this week is Dr. Krista Shamblow, the early childhood consultant at Oakland Schools, as well as Amber McCurtis, a great, a great start readiness program parent through Oakland Schools. Thank you both for being with us today. Thanks for Thank having you, Tyler. Thank you for having us. Yeah, glad to have you both on to talk about this. Uh, 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 Crystal, let's start with you. We know that early uh, education, early childhood education, is a really important phase uh, to go through for these kids. It can have an immense impact on the rest of their education and on their outcomes after their education is complete. So let's talk about some of the resources and the programs that are available through Oakland schools right here in Oakland County that really help to drive home that success in early childhood education. Yeah, I'm happy to share. So we have our Great Start Collaborative, our GSC for Oakland County, and that's our early childhood systems building body. And one of the programs that they offer to help all Oakland County families succeed is called Help Me Grow. And it's really like the one-stop shop for families. It connects families to all types of early childhood services in Oakland County. We have real people. We have Help Me Grow coordinators who are available to help families, and they do this through email, through chat, text, phone. The phone number is 844-456-5437. And they do things like linking families to important resources, to um, offering parenting support, answering questions. They help families with early childhood programming, so locating a preschool to enroll in. And then they also uh, coordinate what's very important in our county, our, our developmental screenings. And I just wanna say a little bit about those screenings. Um, so there's a free screen screening tool for Oakland County families called Ages and Stages Questionnaire. It's our ASQ, and it's relatively a quick screening tool that looks at various areas of child development, and it asks parents to answer questions about just some things that their child at that age can do. And it's private, parents receive their child's results, um, and then based on those results, our care coordinators can assist with matching early childhood services. Most often children are meeting their milestones, but if a potential concern arises, the care coordinator will talk to the family about a referral to a program that may provide support to them. So an example of one of those programs is our Early On, which is a program for infants and toddlers, our younger children, with uh, developmental delays or conditions that are likely to lead to a delay. Um, the Early On tagline that we use is don't worry, but don't wait. So you can get a free developmental assessment, and if your child qualifies, you can get uh, free early intervention services as well. And then one more program I wanna mention is that we also have the Great Start Readiness Program, our GSRP, which I'm directly a part of, and that is our Michigan state-funded preschool program for four-year-old children. 
And, and, and Amber, uh, your daughter was uh, part of the Great Start Readiness Program last year. Uh, how, how have you and your family ultimately benefited from participating in that program through Oakland Schools? Yeah, I, I love what Krista just said. Don't worry, but don't wait. Um, <laughs> that was me. I was the parent that was um, noticing some challenges in my daughter, and I seen Oakland schools that have been in my community, and they told me about the ASQ, and I went online and filled it out, and they did everything for me. They kind of reached out to me and were able to place her in a program. She was able to get support services um, at, a, at a preschool program in my community. They were able to give her bus rides um, to and from school. It was just an awesome opportunity to watch her become, you know, more in independent. You know, as a parent, you're kind of sometimes you're doing stuff for them, <laughs> but um, trans translating those responsibilities, you know, from home to school and watching her little routine, um, you know, kind of connect those dots together. It was just it was just amazing to watch her grow. She got friends, you know, in preschool in preschool um, in the program. Although she has siblings and she has that social, it's different when they have social skills with people their own age, you know? So it was just amazing to watch her engage and create those bonds and um, just kind of boost her confidence. You know, she had some speech challenges and they offered her speech therapy at her program. And just now that she's moved on to kindergarten, I'm just watching her blossom and grow. It's just been amazing. It's been, it's been worth it. <laughs> And in terms of that partnership between parent and school, or parent in this case, the intermediate school district, what, what are, are those factors that you really value as a parent from this program and that collaboration between your school, your daughter, and of course, Oakland schools? Yeah, it, the, the program really gave me an opportunity to get involved um, at the school level. I was able to volunteer. There were opportunities um, for us to do activities at home that translated to school and home. So. We had something called kind hours where it was just prompts to help you, you know, work on different skills at home with with her. So that was great. Um, just getting involved in the community kind of snowballed into this whole advocacy that I have now for for early childhood development, because like I said, I have two older kids and I didn't know that this type of program was available to a working parent um, as myself. And it was just, it's nice to be in touch with the community and have that voice in those spaces, you know, to be able to have ideas and, you know, be in those different spaces where parent voices are needed and they're important. And Dr. Shamblow, uh, it's that time of the year where we're starting to think about the end of this school year, but it's also a really good time to start thinking about next year, especially for those parents that have young children that are right about that preschool age or even going into that formal K through 12 education beginning next fall. So what considerations should parents be making at this time as they're preparing their kids for next fall? Yeah, it's an exciting time. Uh, what parents can do now to help prepare their child for next school year is really to maintain those family routines. So parents can think about some key times in the day and what that looks like in the spring and summer and create a plan with a sequence of a few steps around that time of day. For example, bedtime, right? It might be first we take a bath, then we brush our teeth. So explaining to children what comes first, second, third during that routine and what that looks like. And when parents establish those family routines, whether it be bedtime, meal time, it helps children understand what's coming next. And it's important because it makes our lives more predictable and then children feel safe and secure. So we know that schools are worlds of routine and it's much easier to learn a set of routines at school when children have learned at least one set of routine at home. Um, and then another thing that parents can do now is to think about their day, think about those established routines and just build in some tiny but powerful moments of connection. Um, so it doesn't take a whole lot, just these simple moments. Um, so for example, in the morning, uh, by looking out the window and talking together about what they're seeing, or maybe a connection might be during a meal time by having a back and forth meaningful conversation, or just playing a little bit together before bath, or maybe during bath singing a song. So it doesn't have to be all those things, but just a few during a during a day and those powerful moments, they count. Um, it's really about being responsive as a parent. So 
This requires parents to pause, to remain present, to notice, you know, how they are in the moment, to notice their child, and then um, and then to connect. And we know that when parents are responsive in that way, it supports child development, including brain development, and it also leads to having a caring and nurturing relationship between the child and the parent. So those are kind of like the three R's: routines, responsiveness, and relationship. And so I just want to. Um, you know, have a little plug in for our GSRP program. So in what in terms of what families can do now who are considering preschool for the fall um, to call our number 844-456-5437 and fill out an application. Uh, this is for our GSRP program, our preschool program. We have over 200 classrooms throughout Oakland County. Um, this provides very high quality preschool. We have wonderful teachers, highly qualified, responsive teachers, and this program is at low or no cost to families. And what's exciting is next year, we expect to have even more classrooms. Um, there may be a higher income threshold. And because we don't know yet uh, the eligibility for next year, we are just recommending all families to call that number fill out an application now um, if they will have a child who will be four by September 1st. Again, that phone number 844-456-5437, 844-456-5437. You can also find that number and more information and other ways to get in contact with Oakland schools about these programs at greatstartoakland.org. Uh, Amber, uh, having gone through this experience as a parent and having your daughter having gone through uh, the Great Start Readiness Program, what advice do you do you have or insight do you have for parents that are preparing to go through this process of either getting their kid into one of these Oakland schools early education programs or as they're going through that program next school year? Yeah, I think um, for me, the ASQ was the that stepping stone for me. Um, even if you don't notice anything in your child, just a good gauge of what skills they are thriving in and what skills they may need a little bit more support in. So I would say that's the first stepping stone um, and then calling that number. The, the great start is that plug that connects you to any resources that you may need. You can call or text the number. If you go to the website, you can even chat with somebody. Um, I still use it to this day um, <laughs> because sometimes as a parent, you just have a question. So I would say first step, get that ASQ done um, just to see where your, 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 your little person is at. And then um, go to the website and, and see if the ladies over there, the care coordinators can connect you to some resources or if you just got a question. That website is greatstartoakland.org. Uh, Dr. Shamblow, we've got one minute left uh, on today's program. Oakland Schools is celebrating the month of the young child in a variety of different ways. What are they doing in, in, uh, uniquely to highlight early childhood education during this month? Sure, so we have our Learning Through Play series. It's a set of uh, stories about how play is uh, so important to children's learning. Um, in the last decade, we've learned a great deal about how children learn and develop, and research shows that play is a key way that children discover, build, and it reinforces knowledge about their world. So um, these are stories from our GSRP teachers, and they're just 90-second glimpses into what a GSRP program looks like and how powerful play is for children's learning. And I think um, we are launching those weekly um, through Oakland Schools uh, Facebook. Dr. Krista Shamblow from the Early Childhood Education Program at Oakland Schools, our early childhood consultant, and Amber Curtis, a parent in the Great Start Readiness Program this school year, joining us on the Oakland Schools Education Insider on the MAGACast today. Thank you both for being with us. Thank you so much. One last time, those resources, greatstartoakland.org, or call them 844-456-5437, 844-456-5437, greatstartoakland.org. That is going to do it for today's edition of the MegaCast. A big thank you to everyone that joined us on today's program. Of course, Carrie Craywick for our weekly mental health segment from the Birmingham Maple Clinic. Cindy Sierra from CC Consulting as we talked about commercial real estate in southeastern Michigan. And, of course, Dr. Krista Shamblow and, uh, and, and uh, Amber McCurtis from the Great Start Readiness Program and the Oakland Schools Education uh, Program, Early Education Program as well. You can always find our show and find today's episode and each one of these segments on demand on civiccentertv.com slash MAGACast. Big thank you to our crew, Jared Clark and Calvin, Calvin Brown as well for making this program possible today. Until next time, take care of each other and we'll see you very soon.